Welcome to Electra Online. Now here we're going to present to you a really important technique to help understanding and also to make sure that we did the problem correctly. And this doesn't apply just to the electric field or Coulomb's law, this applies to all things in physics. It's what we call taking things to the limit. For example, in the previous video, we ended up finding the electric field at this point due to the two charges right here, distance d apart, and we found it to be 2 divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught qx over the quantity x squared plus d over 2 squared raised to the 3 halves power, pointing in the x direction. Now, what we can do is we can take things to the limit. For example, what happens when d goes to 0? What happens when d goes to infinity? What happens when x goes to zero? What happens when x goes to infinity? How does it affect our answer and does that make sense? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to let d go to zero. So we bring the two charges together at the same point right here and essentially we now get a single point charge equal to 2q. Now how would that affect the equation? Well, let's go over here and let d go to zero. When d goes to zero, this disappears. And we end up with x squared raised to the 3 halves power, which is essentially x cubed in the denominator. So we have an x in the numerator and an x cubed in the denominator. So the x cancels out one of the x's in the denominator. And we end up with the following, that the electric field is then going to be equal to 2 divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught times q. So we have two q's and the x cancels out in the denominator we end up with x squared in the x direction and so that is the very familiar equation for the electric field of a point charge now in this case the point charge will be 2q instead of 1q but we get the exact same equation that we normally get so you can see that the equation boils down to the correct equation when we let d go to zero what if we let x go to zero instead so we keep the two charges there now we bring x right there in the middle notice we're now in the middle between two positive charges the electric field will be pointing in this direction due to discharge in this direction due to the discharge because of symmetry the magnitude should be the same so they should essentially cancel each other out is that the case when we let x go to zero and so sure enough since we have an x in the, in the numerator and we have an x squared in the denominator but we also have a d over 2 squared which is not zero so there's no zero in the denominator then the numerator becomes zero and then we can see that the electric field simply is equal to zero and that makes sense because when we're right in the middle here the electric fields are equal in magnitude and opposite direction so they should cancel each other out so again that holds true what if d goes to infinity? What if we now take the two charges and keep moving them farther and farther and farther apart as it becomes, the distance becomes extremely large relative to distance x? What happens now? Well, we can see here that if d becomes almost infinitely large, that would, that would then be much, much larger than x. Essentially, we can get rid of the x. x would essentially be zero in terms of, of um, the value d. And if x is really small relative to, to the value d, then essentially we get some small number divided by infinity in the denominator, and the whole thing would go to zero again. So when d goes to infinity, we put them infinitely far apart. Essentially, that almost makes it seem as if they're right over the point of interest, equal distance, equal magnitudes, and again, it would cancel out and go to zero. And finally, what would happen if x goes to infinity? Well, when x becomes infinitely large, essentially we have x in the numerator, but x cubed in the denominator, d would essentially be ignored. And so we end up with 1 over x squared, but because x and x cubed will cancel out, since this would go to 0, essentially, because d would be so small relative to an enormously large x. So when we have x over, uh, 1, over r, uh, 1 over x squared, and x becomes really large, that's essentially zero. So we can see that when x goes to infinity, the electric field goes to zero as well. And that makes sense because when you're infinitely far away from a point charge, you're so far away that essentially the electric field should go to zero. And so you can see that you can play these little games. Uh, well, it's more than just a game. It's actually kind of an intuitive feeling for what happens when things go to the limit. When they go to zero, when they go to infinity, you can then see how that affects your equation. Does that make sense that you get these values? And the end, it ends up, yes, that is true. So that means that this equation holds up against all these potential limits, taking things to zero, taking things to infinity. And when every time the result you get from the equation 
matches the result you get from thinking intuitively about what should happen when you take these items to the limit, then you realize that your equation is solid and it meets all the expectations at the limiting cases. And that's a very useful thing to do in physics. As you can see, a very useful thing to do when we're dealing with Coulomb's law and the electric field. And that is how it's done. What happens when d goes to zero and x goes to zero? Well, let's see here. When d goes to zero, you have like a point charge of 2q. Now x goes to zero, we're infinitely close, so to speak. I don't know if that's a proper way of saying it, but we're really close. The distance goes essentially to zero. Then you would have what we would call something that's undefined. But if you go back to what we discovered in the last chapter when we talked about the delta function, the three-dimensional delta function, we actually had a really nice definition that allowed you to find some value of the electric field even though it essentially goes to zero. In the real world, you can never get the distance between the charge and the point to be zero because then you'd be right in the middle of the point and that wouldn't be fair. If you're just right outside the point, you still get a reasonable value, although it would be very big value, you can still find that and that can be done by using the three-dimensional delta function. So if you go back to the previous chapter where we talk about that, that's the exact case that that is used for. So it works. And then what happens if d goes into d? <laughs> and x goes into d? What happened when they both go to infinity? Wow, that's a good, that's a good point. Uh, let's see here. When they both go to infinity, um, so these would be equally large. This is x cubed, essentially. This is d cubed, essentially. And then we have x in the numerator. Wow. I think we would have to work that out numerically. What I would recommend that we do in that case, we plug in values for x and for d, equal in size, make them 100, make them 1,000, make them a million, make them a billion, and see what happens. And I believe, Huh. Huh. Essentially, I think the electric field would eventually go to zero as well if we take the limit. But that's a, that's actually a good point. Um, you know there are other combinations too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are other combinations. But uh, I think I would keep it simple like this. You know, but that's a good point. You don't want to say d equals zero and then x to infinity? Um, no, no, I think we're getting too complicated. <laughs> I would keep it at this. This gives you plenty of information and plenty of solidity on the value of the, of the validity of the equation. I would stick to this. What if you can't sleep? <laughs> if it keeps you awake, then yes, grab your book, grab your calculator, and go at it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> only a mathematician would think of that. <laughs>